This is Chief Market Strategist, Blue Line Futures. Phil, good to have you with us. Welcome. Uh, how much clarity do you think we can expect Fed Chair Jerome Powell tomorrow in terms of his statement? Well, he's going to come out and say that he's committed to bringing inflation down. And really, it's the, the data that comes out that supports whether or not uh, the upcoming policy decisions are to remain very hawkish or to ease back on there. Really, your bull case on the S&P 500, and it is amazing how that 200-day moving average did hold as that formidable resistance point. We've seen that many years, these bear market bounces right up to the 200-day, and then it, the market fails. But you really need to see this inflation come down quite a bit, very fast, and then the Fed needs to stop in September, and then maybe sprinkle a rate hike here or there. That's how you get that full case up to 4,500. The jobs got to support, the wages got to support the, the economy and the growth. The bear case is that inflation doesn't stop. And it wasn't good that we saw you know, OPEC talking about a production cut on oil. That really puts a lot of pressure on, um, on inflation to the upside. And the Fed's got to continue to raise rates aggressively well into 2023. That's where you get the 3,500 number on the S&P. Okay, I want to unpack some of that because what if inflation doesn't stop ultimately? I, I, yesterday, I was picturing Fed Chair Jerome Powell sitting back behind his desk, just scratching his head, right? You've got lawmakers that are pushing him and asking him why we have this uh, runaway inflation ultimately. But, you know, the Biden administration is basically providing more helicopter cash, essentially. I mean, there's, you know, you could be on one side of this argument or the other, depending on where you are. But this is stimulus, Phil. And here again, kind of looking at that 200-day moving average, I want to get back to this chart real quick because we were looking at the ES. But here I've got the quad chart here. So all four of the majors right now represented. And you can see all four just recently kind of right back to that 200-day moving average and retreating away from. That rally off the June lows, here, here's my question, Phil. Was it tied to kind of anticipation of this deal going through ultimately and seemed to see very little market reaction to it yesterday? Was all of that just kind of this stimulus measure, the forgiving of these loans, was that priced in? I think so. I mean, it's, it's a head scratcher that they could be doing all these stimulus measures when they're trying to reduce the balance yeah. sheet. They're trying to get rid of inflation. You can't do that. And I mean, he's got to face a lot of political pressure. I read a story yesterday that said like one in six people are behind on their utility bills, yeah. which I find completely shocking. It's like some like 20 million Americans. Yeah. So, you know, the inflation problem that they have, it's it's a tough battle. They can't and, and the way they're fighting it, you know, we see it specifically on food and energy. Food is going to do its thing because a lot of it has to do with the growth cycle of crops and things like that. If they can get some of the shipments out of Ukraine and they start to alleviate some of the pressure on the grain markets. But that energy, that's a whole nother ball game. And a chart that people aren't looking at is how they're draining the SPR to fill, mm -hmm. you know, the, the reserves. Mm -hmm. And it's going to put us in a dangerous situation down the road. I really favor the upside of crude oil, just so you know. Well, coming off recently supported levels here, back above 90. So we talk about, again, a breach of, uh, again, a key level around 90 is significant. We got down to 85, but we spent a very little amount of time down there. And to your point, one of the reasons we're hearing about these prices being supported is at some point, they're going to have to replenish those stockpiles, right? So they're depleting them, but but you can't leave them at these lower levels. Inventory is at, uh, you know, lower levels as well here, multi-year low levels here. So, uh, and I was looking at it this morning. I think uh, the first time we've seen a, uh, the last two weeks in terms of draws, and I want to talk financial markets here with you more, but uh, in terms of draws here, the last couple times we've seen uh, last two weeks more than, uh, it's fallen by 10 million barrels roughly, uh, in the biggest two-week drawdown we've seen in a year. Um, so yeah. talk to me a little bit about what we're seeing here in terms of rates though, because Rates seem to be more an indication as they settled into this range. Yeah, we're sort of like working our way through the middle of it right now, up through 3% through the TNX. Again, I, I sort of see the upper extreme 3.5, the lower extreme 2.5. I don't think we actually got down there. It was more like 2.6, 2.7. But, but what do you see playing out here right now? I mean, if we don't get that clarity from Fed Chair Jerome Powell, do you see that kind of sideways consolidation continuing as we just speculate further into the September meeting? I mean, we know we're data dependent. Everybody's talking about needing the next CPI number, the next employment number. I mean, uh, the, the data we've seen didn't really seem to tip the scales for Fed speakers. They were already seem to be looking past it. And I guess, uh, uh, does the comments Friday, again, just further that speculation into the September meeting? 
When you go to the September meeting, if you look at the CME Fed watch tool, we monitor on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, yesterday it was about 50-50 on that 75 basis point rate hike. Now it's 60-40, so it's it's gaining momentum that 75 basis point. So it's something we got to keep an eye on. I mean, I think he's going to be very hawkish. You look at the dollar; the dollar is right right up there. You know, it was 20-year highs. So dollar's going to remain firm. Yields are going to remain firm in the short run, but you go farther out, look at the damage that those higher yields are doing to the housing market. We're mm -hmm. already seeing housing mm -hmm. prices correcting. We're seeing housing starts, housing, you know, building permits, mm -hmm. things like that. They're all starting to come down. So I think yields are going to find a happy medium and the curve is going to flatten eventually here. But, uh, you know, you just it's, we got to take it one day at a time. I mean, it just seems like it's one big event after another the, the after tomorrow's you know, Jackson Hole will be looking at that August CPI report on September 13th. These are the big drivers in the market and big pivots. It's crazy how we're so dialed in on one number. And then again, as you just pointed out, and then we quickly shift to the next uh, data point to come here. I mean, this market has everyone on the edge of the seats here, these conditions, to say the least. Neon swan type conditions coming out of the pandemic. You mentioned of housing or you mentioned how housing has been a reflection of higher rates. It's we can no question. I guess the next question is, uh, is the next kind of uh, indicator of that the jobs because that's been one of the pillars of strength as well that we've seen so that would be concerning phil to the strength in the u.s dollar i mean you can chalk some of what we've seen to a uh, hawkish tone as far as the fed expectations for rate hikes to continue to come and uh, to your point as far as the the uh you know what the fed funds tool is pointing to right now but i mean ultimately you've got a lot of weakness in some of the other foreign currencies as well you've got a recession playing out here expected european recession with energy prices spiking i mean natural gas up something like 20 percent there this week alone i mean uh, they're dealing with a very difficult situation that's weakening the currencies that ultimately bolster and sort of support the u.s dollar as well so there's multiple tr contributing factors to that upside momentum there i found it shocking that the euro currency dipped below um, you know below par there so that I, I haven't seen that since you know like 2008 um but uh you know, it's, it's tough on the currencies because Europe's in a much worse situation that are way too interconnected with Russian gas, Russian oil, time. things like that. And if they shut that off this winter, you know, that's going to be a big problem. They're going to freeze out Europe and it's going to cause a lot more devastation in the Ukraine. So, um, you know, you got to keep an eye on that. I don't know how Europe is going to be able to raise rates, fight inflation, you know, and, and their situation's much worse. So I favor buying dips on the U.S. dollar. We come down 106.22, I believe, is 50-day moving average. I think you buy that first test of it. And euro currency, I think you sell rallies going forward. We we're just looking at the euro currency. Just to your point here, I want to pull up the dollar again. We just stressed the inverse correlation, tick for tick for the most part. I mean, the euro is what makes up that bulk of the basket of currencies there. Phil, in terms of other currencies to watch, you mentioned Europe, obviously, in a kind of that basket. You factor in the Swiss, the British pound, those have both been weakening. But I've also been keeping an eye on our neighbors to the north. Canadian dollar has been coming off. You've got the Japanese yen as well. What else do you have your eye on? And, and what should we be dialed in on? Not, not much on, on the other currencies. I'm trying to avoid them. I don't like the what their interconnection to certain commodities. And if those governments are making these initiatives to bang down inflation, you're going to see those commodity-based currencies like the Aust Australian and Canadian, you know, they're going to come off as well. It's going to yeah, further strengthen um, the dollar index. So, you know, other currencies, you know, shift to, shift to something else. Go alternative. Look at the gold market. You know, I mean, it's holding pretty firm. We got a bigger, higher low right now. We could go back up through. We get through 1800, 1820. It could be a breakout to the upside. Gold is a currency. It's not a commodity.